Ray, and I'm here to show you a little bit about how to um, pour an open face mold with uh, pewter. Uh, pewter is very easy to work with metal. Uh, its melting point is 500 degrees, um, which, you know, you can get your household oven up to 500 degrees. So it's one of the easiest metals to work with. Um, although it is kind of expensive, I bought five pounds and it cost me like $130. Uh, aluminum is much cheaper, but it's got a higher melting point. It's harder to work with. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about a little bit about what I'm doing and my setup. So first things first, safety first. Um, my safety equipment that I have here, it's all set up and ready to go at a moment's notice if something happens. Um, I have a leather apron. This is a welding apron. You can get it at Harbor Freight or any of your welding supply stores. Um, this is in case I splash myself with the metal. Um, the metal will bounce off and it won't hit me and get me, um, or it won't burn me. Um, I have safety glasses because you should always wear safety glasses for any uh, project. It keeps your eyes safe. Eyes are very important. And, uh, jobs like this. Okay, um, I have welding gloves. Um, 500 degrees isn't that hot, but it is still hot enough to burn me, and so I take, I use my welding gloves, um, because I have to take a hold of the metal here and here that is going to have contact with the flame. Okay, over here I have a pot holder and an extra glove. These are going to give me extra protection because uh, my gloves aren't always, you know, the best gloves in the world, just, just to make sure that I don't burn myself. Over here, I have a fire extinguisher. I will be using flame, so I want to make sure that if I put anything that I don't want on fire, that I can, like, douse the flame very quickly. Um, this one is uh, for household stuff, but it will work very well for what we're doing here. Over here, I have our crucible um, with uh, the mold or with the pewter in it that I'm going to melt to fill my mold. Um, this is actually a um, cast iron pan that I have been casting pewter in. Um, cast iron has an incredibly high melting point, so it won't melt. This is steel; it also has an incredibly high melting point. Um, higher than the crucible, so we're not going to melt that. These are fire bricks here. Um, it will reflect the heat up back into the pan at the bottom. Alright, over here I have my open face mold. Um, right now it is uh, a very large um, piece. It is the Assassin's Creed belt buckle. I'm making this for a friend of mine for her Assassin's Creed cosplay. Alright, the next thing I have here are, um, these are actually little bread tins, and, uh, they're here so that if I have any extra metal in the crucible after I have poured the mold, I can pour the excess material in these, so I have a place to go. Um, I don't want my metal to solidify in the crucible because it's harder to get it out and I want to be able to reuse any excess material. Now my heat source is a little bit excessive for what I'm doing. Um, this is actually a brush burner. Uh, you can find these at like farm places like uh, Farm and Fleet or uh, Rural King or any other farm supply store. Um, this will pump out more than enough heat to melt my metal. Um, ordinarily I would just use a plumber's torch, but because I have so much metal, I can't heat all of the metal evenly enough with a plumber's torch because the flame is too small. So the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to walk you through what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to use the brush burner to heat up the crucible with all the metal and it's going to go really fast because like I said the, the burner is a very um, excessive for what we're trying to do here. Uh, when all the metal is liquid I'm going to grab both handles 
and now I'm gonna come over to the, to the mold and then I'm gonna pour it in there and then when that's full I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna fill the ingots the front one first and then the back one and then I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna wait for it to cool and then we will show you after it's cool the dismolding process Here we go. So now that we filled this mold, we will be able to come back in a few and uh, just mold it and see what we got. Alright, so now it's time to just mold it. It's all cool and stuff. So here we have the pattern. Alright, so I'm gonna use this bench knife. Try and pry it up a bit. Alright, and here we have it. It's a little bit blocky here, or faint. But I got a bunch of my details in here. This is the final piece. Um, uh, as you can see, I've cleaned it up and I've patinaed it. Um, the first thing I did was I cut off all the flashing or the metal that was not supposed to be a part of the pattern. Um, when I first poured this, the top part here uh, lost some of its detail. Um, so it was actually smooth. Right, so I went and I took a my engraver and I engraved the rest of the details into the top so that it matches down here. And then I put it in a bath of liver of sulfur. Oh, it's a patina. Uh, it's a solution of uh, sulfur and water and some other chemicals. And it darkens up the metal is what it does. So now that it's done, I'm going to be able to give it to its real owner.